Then we start, we have a list, a huge list of animations, kicks, punches, uppercuts, and then the special moves and stuff. And we basically go down that list, capturing every single frame of, um, of, of them performing these moves. Hi, Raiden. Hi, Sector. One, two, three. Yeah, that's good. Let's, let's try that one. You have to do each move eight ways. As you see, a joystick goes eight different ways. So if I was to do a front kick, I'd have to do it frontwards, backwards, sideways, and diagonal four different ways. This is why we have the tape on the floor, just to keep them facing the right direction. Here's the, the uh, camera that takes in the signal. We run signals into our beta camera recorder, and we also run a signal here into our PC. And then on our, on our PC here, we have uh, one of our uh, boards connected to that. And also, uh, this is where we do the actual uh, grabbing of frames uh, to be digitized. You can kind of see our talent uh, out there, and I'll really quickly grab, grab some images of them. That's good, Tony. We're able to click through frame by frame, uh, delete the frames we don't want, keep the frames that we do like. As a matter of fact, you know what we should do? Yeah, we, shove them. We should shove them. <laughs> we should have done that from day one. Everybody just, somebody just push them real hard. We should uh, just, all right, now the next animation, just to stand there. <laughs> push them. The day that we spend filming is probably, you know, like 2% like of the entire amount of time that has to be devoted into doing it. Once we get the digitized image, it's a lot, it's a lot like painting. And right now we're going through a process where we sort of filter the images through. We'll grab the image and Steve Baran will start and do, you know, do some Photoshop on the guy and then we'll hand him over to Tony who does some touch-up. And then it gets passed over to me, and then I do some of this more detailed touch-up, and then I give it back to Steve, and he kind of separates the different colors and, and creates the different palettes, and then we give it back to Tony, and he does the final touch-up and stuff and gets it ready for the game. I did a drawing of this and everything. In 3D, you could make it any size and any lighting, any angle you wanted. Uh, Dave Michichich did this, the 3D version. This is a, it's just ornamental, you know, it's just like kind of a, a, a really a neat background thing. But I was telling Ed about the story, like it's a soul cage. I'm working on a uh, friendship move for our Shigoro character, that's her tentative name she doesn't have. She doesn't have a real name yet. Her move is she's going to turn around and she's going to pull out uh, sort of plates and little sticks and she spins the plates and the sticks and balances them on her hand and she does this with her back towards you. Shiva wins friendship. This is uh, Shang Tsung morphing into the robot ninja who we call Ketchup right now because right now there's there's a red guy and there's a yellow guy so we call them Ketchup and Mustard. But they will have real names later on. Ah! Hey. Ah! And, then, and then you know what? And, we, and then we can give them numbers, so it'll be poop on <laughs> you too, you know. Right. <laughs> uh, whatever can possibly happen in the game, you know, I have to program the game to be able to do that. As you play the game when you first start, the computer is very dumb. It'll just stand there, it'll let you beat it up. And then as you fight the second guy, it'll get a little smarter, and then the third guy a little smarter. And it has to be progressive. It has to be something that's, you know, a, a smooth increase in, uh, in the difficulty. Because if, if you play the game the first time and the computer kills you, you're not going to want to play it again. There's comfort in knowing that the other person is doing their job beyond your expectations. The good thing about working with that is you can hand them uh, some artwork, and you can, you know, you'll see it in the game pretty quickly. Time! You tell me time! Um, well, we, we test the games. When, when it comes close to the time that the game is done, they have us come in and we, we just play it. We play them all day long and look for bugs. 
The difference between Mortal Kombat 2 and Mortal Kombat 3 is that it added a run button. And when you use the run button, it makes you aggressive towards your opponent. You're going to have to keep on using the run over and over and over to attack your opponent. <laughs> what we're going to show you now is a few, a few simple combos that will get you started playing. A lot of characters have a, a simple combo of kicks, which usually involves three, three presses of the same button. Uh, like Cyrax has, it's, uh, you press high kick twice and then back and high kick for the final hit. And he does three hits and knocks the opponent away. My favorite move would probably be Kano's uh, chokehold. It would be down towards low punch. <laughs> One of my favorite codes is disable blocking. Uh, each player presses block twice when the code things come up on the screen. And uh, it turns off blocking so you can't be a defensive player. You have to play offensively or you're going to lose because there's no way you can